Hello and welcome back to another episode of Reach Your Happy with Laura. I am Laura here to talk to you today about relationships, which may immediately make you go, mm, I need to go to the next thing. It may immediately cause some internal resistance for you to arise. Relationships are consistently challenging consistently asking us to grow in some form or another. Why are relationships so hard? Why is love so challenging for us humans? Why do we struggle with our children, with our family, with our parents? What is that about? So again, you may feel this kind of like, ah, already. And I'm gonna invite you to, to just, go for this ride to not think too much about fixing things right now but instead just hear me out relationships are hard you hear it all the time but why 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 are they so challenging what is it about relationships? We all want them. We all want love in our life. We want intimate relationships. We want good conversation and connection with our children, with our family. We want that. So why the heck is it so hard? Well, I'll tell you what I think. Relationships are a direct reflection of what's going on inside of us. It's like the more you care about a type of relationship, the more intense and difficult and blinding and confusing and challenging it becomes. And that is partly because the closer relationship it is, the closer to the center of you it is. Relationships mirror to us what's going on inside. So doesn't that make a lot of sense why they're so challenging? Your partner or your lack thereof a partner, perhaps you're single and so sick of being single. That feeling of lack, that feeling of discontent of just not having what you feel you really want or if you do have a partner and you're really struggling with that person, you know you love them, but every button in you is activated. You maybe feel betrayed or abandoned or forgotten about, unimportant, not heard. And maybe, you know, these single people out there are feeling very similar things, not seen, not held, not cared for, not all that important. And this similar theme brings us to one point. Relationships are a catalyst for us to grow. And if you're not in a loving, intimate relationship with a partner, then you know you are continuously asked to look inward, to keep addressing what is up for me. What am I moving through? And a lot of relationships, past relationships were really challenging. And it's so easy to focus on how things didn't go well, where that person went wrong, where you went wrong, what was miscommunicated. And most of our attention goes to what didn't work. How often do you look at an ex and really feel into the love that you felt with that person? or the fun you had, or the intimacy you shared. How often do you really do that? I know I don't. I know I don't hear it from clients saying like, yeah, he was a really great one, yeah. No, it's, and I felt betrayed, and this happened, and I can't believe he did that, and I thought he was the one. I don't understand what's going. And it's normal. When a situation doesn't go the way we hoped it to, when we are the one on the outskirts, maybe they have recoupled with somebody else and you're still not having that. 
And you're wondering, you're starting to question like, what's wrong with me? If I don't have that, what's wrong with me? And there's nothing wrong with you. You are human, so you struggle with relationships. You have relationship issues. That is just what it is. Because we have unresolved stuff within us. That is not to say that you need to resolve it all and come to this place of peace and wholeness to allow love in. I am a living, breathing example of not having all my stuff together and always having a loving relationship. I have always attracted partners into my experience. And they, a lot of them came about by force of me. But I still had so many issues with myself. Lack of self-worth, lack of self-respect, consistently betraying my needs to serve someone else. People pleaser to the core. So you don't have to be in this perfect state to let love in. And to let love in, that that's a really important thing to remember. To let love in is to accept that I am now vulnerable. When you let love in, you're opening yourself to the opposite of love. You can't have just a tidbit of love and nothing else. It's love and everything that comes along with it, which is heartache, loss, grief, right? The opposite of love is grief, is that loss, is that pain. If you've lost a loved one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The amount you love someone when they're physically no longer here or they've just you're not in relationship with them anymore the intensity of the grief is equal but on the opposite side of the scale and if you're in a relationship you know that every single day the different things that arise in communication or lack thereof, the different things that trigger you are about you and your personal evolution. Someone that's alone, same thing. The ways you feel like you're lacking, the things your mind is telling you about why you don't have love, that's the work. It's not in making yourself more beautiful. It's about loving yourself more, loving how you look more, being owning who you are relationships help us it is the key to our greatest healing that's why we all want them so much because we all want to access deeper levels of healing and you will pick a partner that aggravates those deepest nerves those deepest wounds why because when you're in a loving relationship that's what that's what helps you unearth this stuff and helps you address it but many people are not conscious, not looking at it this way. We, we take relationships so personal. This person is doing that to me. No, that person has their own stuff going on. When he cheats, it's about him. If you've ever cheated before, you know. It's not about that person, it's about you. It's not about that person. They don't need to be better, smarter, and it, no. You made a choice to do what you did. That had nothing to do with them. So likewise, when someone can be there for you, that's a them thing, not you. So relationships, it's so hard not to take how someone behaves personally. Maybe you're conscious of this, maybe you're not, but there definitely is this essence of, you behave this way to make me happy. And if you don't behave that way, I'm going to be unhappy and I'm going to let you know. Every time I get, like this morning, I was uh, feeling agitated because I had a headache from yesterday and I had to reschedule sessions and I really hate doing that. I couldn't even stand up. My head hurt so bad. And I think I know why. But regardless, I was angry. Woke up. Fingers crossed that I woke up without a headache. I woke up with a headache and I was angry. 
my relationship to pain, right? Expanding it beyond just love relationship. My relationship to pain has always been about like, I did something wrong to call this on. What did I do? Why am I being punished? Pain has always been punishment to me. When pain is, I'm seeing, I, I can see it clearly when I'm not in pain, that pain is just an indicator. Hey, something's going on here. Hey, there's, there's stuff here. I've gotta work through some things. So I was angry or this morning and um, Brad and I woke up at six o'clock to do a workout and I was just like grinding it out. I was just like, oh my God, really pushing, really quiet. And Brad was like, can I help you? And I'm like, nope. And then I had to move the bench and I was holding a weight and he's like, seriously, <laughs> like you're that resistant to help. I'm like, yep, I'm just in a mood. I'm pissed off and I'm trying to work out this headache. And actually my workout did help my headache. That's another topic. I'm going to shelf that just for a moment. Remind me. <laughs> um, and I, in my angry state, I kept trying to look for things that would annoy me, that would frustrate me. And because I'm becoming more aware of this, it would frustrate me about Brad, my husband. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're trying to point, like, you're trying to put something on him that's about you, Laura. Oh, the music's too loud. I don't like the song. This is a stupid song. Why is he so happy? <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're putting that all on him. This is about you, boo. And just accepting that. Telling my mind, like, yo, this isn't about Brad. You're pissed because there's a relationship with pain that you got going on that you don't want to look at and you're trying to project it on him. And I was like, fine, whatever, did my workout, explained to Brad, like, I'm just not, I'm, I'm, I'm in it, all right? I'm in the zone of my own mind, really suffering. And he's like, all right, hands off. Um, and so I do my workout and I felt better afterwards. And then I went over and I was like, can I have a hug? I feel better. I feel like, I feel open to receiving love now. And he, we have very open conversations. So he knows exactly what I'm talking about. And, um, Yeah, so pain, relationship, I shelved it, thank you for reminding me. So my relationship to pain also impacts my relationship to my husband. Your relationship to one thing impacts everything, y'all, it's crazy, okay? Your relationship to your body impacts your sex life. Your relationship to death and loss affects how much you love and how much you let people in. Everything is intertwined. So my relationship to pain is also connected to me not allowing love in when I'm in pain. I push the world away when I'm in pain. When really so many people want to help me. I have a friend that's always so helpful about headaches for me. I have my husband wanting to do anything he can. I'm laughing because I'm remembering him come in the house yesterday trying to be all quiet and then he slammed the door and I was just like, <laughs> I wanted to be mad, but he was trying to be sweet, but it was making me mad. He was not making me mad. My pain frustrates me. And instead of getting present with my pain and breathing and acknowledging that this is not about him. I just wanted to throw it all on him, make it about him. It's about me. We got into an argument last week, stress was high. Um, and he said some things and I was just like, I'm gonna actually had a headache as well. And I was like, I'm, I got nothing to say. I don't have it in me. And, and I realize that is the ultimate act of self-love to not react to someone else's pain. He was going through a lot of stuff and I was very aware of that. So I was able to just kind of be like, this ain't your best self. It's hard for me to be really loving to you. And the most loving thing I can do for me is step away and just, no, I got nothing to say. You know, kind of, I wasn't being dismissive, but I wasn't engaging. I just wasn't willing to go there. I didn't have it. Um, and in my mind, I was very aware that both of us were dealing with something internally that could have exploded into an us thing that causes another layer of pain. I was like, I just don't want to do that. So I didn't. And uh, that unfolded as it did internally for him, internally for me. 
And so, yes, the relationship to pain, your relationship to love, your relationship to sex, your relationship to food, your relationship to finances, your relationship to everything is not about the actual thing, but your relationship inside of you. And our mind will have us thinking, no, it's definitely about him. No, it's definitely about my lack. It's definitely, it's not. So we seek relationships to help us unearth what's actually going on inside of us. But relationships are so distracting. We get so caught up in the outside. Um, relationship to your business, to your work, to your offerings, to your money, to your food, to your home, to your whatever it is. They are distractions away from in here. And I think that's probably why monks... Um, and different people in the world do this minimalistic lifestyle because it takes away any excuse. I have used a messy house, putting me, I'm air quoting if you're, not, if you're just listening, putting me in a bad mood countless times. And now, I, this happened yesterday. I had a client coming first thing and there was a couple things out. I, there wasn't that much, but I um, forget what I was frustrated about. And I was like, oh, this house is so messy. It's so, and it's like, no, Laura, it ain't it, girl. That's not what it is. I think that was the beginning of my headache. So I immediately tried to go outside of myself and the life, my body was like, no, nope, we're going to have you sit down on the couch. We're going to clean this up. I did clean it up and all that, but it's like, we make things outside of us the problem and it's never the problem. So when you're struggling with relationship stuff, go in, go in here. What's going on in here? What is this aggravating for me? Because something that's aggravated is getting active activated, which can also shift, which is definitely hard. I do this for a living. So I understand that my way of being and me calling it out like, oh, my mood isn't really about the house, but I'm saying it is, is actually something in me that's a bit off that I need to spend some time with. I see that. So struggling with relationships is human nature, but Let's reframe that. Struggling with relationships with myself is human nature. Unwinding these beliefs that I have about what I really deserve and how I need to treat myself, how I need to care for myself, that's really what's up. Not this other person. This other person is the gift. The other person is the messenger. Not to be shot, but instead to be thanked. Those past lovers, past relationships, again, we so focus on what didn't work out but what did you learn from that person? What do you now know that you didn't before? What kind of desire did that launch for you that wasn't active before you experienced that? And it's so amazing. Our own minds create such an intense story that wraps us up so tightly that we can't even see that we are in the way, that our own thinking is in the way of our solution. So I am through here for today. I am going to be hosting a group healing all about relationships, all about love, how to do it, how to move through it. So if you'd like to join, I will have a link in my website, which is reachyourhappy.com and 1114 at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I will do it live over the phone, but I will also record it. So if you cannot make it to the live and you want this healing for reference for your future self, then you can still sign up through that link. You will still get the email and the notifications about the timing of it, and you can play it back at any time. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for showing up. I deeply appreciate you. I love you. Be kind to yourself and watch what shifts in your relationships when you start doing that. And I hope this made a difference for you. I hope this starts to open your eyes to the possibility that I can have what I want in loving relationships, but it starts with me. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.